So we're going to learn how to solve some equations that have decimals in them. And last time in our little preview here, I gave you an example like this. And I said, if you have x minus 1 equals 8, the way you'd solve that problem is you would just add 1 to both sides. That's going to move the 1 away from the x, get the x by itself. And of course, it's an equation, so you'd have to do it to both sides. And we would get x equals 9, and everybody's happy. Now, what I can tell you is that solving equations with decimals work exactly the same way. There's nothing new you have to do. It's just that now we have some decimals involved in these, none of these problems. So instead of x minus 1 equals 8, you're going to be dealing with stuff like x minus 1.5 equals 8. So where there's a decimal. Do you have to do anything different? No. No. What are you going to do to get rid of that 1.5? Add one. Just like in the previous example, you're still going to add that. It's going to look identical, only now you have a decimal. So x on the left-hand side, 9.5 on the right-hand side. You can still actually check your work if you'd like to. 9.5 minus 1.5 is 8. So we're good to go. Why don't you try one on your own? Just make sure you get the, the basic idea, and then we'll keep moving on. Z plus 0.9 equals 1.3. Hey, what's your variable here? Z. Z. What are you trying to get rid of? 0.9. How are you going to get rid of that? Minus. So when we say subtract it, we don't just mean from one side. Well, we're going to have Z on the left-hand side. That's great. On the right-hand side, 1.3 minus 0.9. Look, there's no shame in doing the work off to the side. If you want to write this over here, if you need that, then do that. You're subtracting 1.3 minus 0.9. You're going to get 0.4. Do it off the side. That's fine. That's fine. Just make sure we're getting these things correct. I mean, don't have a calculator to rely on in this section, on this test. Next test, yes, absolutely. But not for this test. We get 0 0.4. <coughs> That's our solution. Raise your hand feel okay with these two examples so far. All right. Well, we're going to keep moving on. Hey, is it still possible to do an example like this? Let's say we had... Uh, 0.17x equals negative 0 0.34. Well, we have, I know x is our variable. I'm trying to get that by itself. Is it appropriate to subtract 0.17 here? No. What does 0.17x mean? Times. Yeah, it means times. How do we undo the times? Divide. So, wait, well, hey, if we can divide decimals, we can still do this problem. No big deal. We know that any time we have a number in front of x, that's called a coefficient. Can you say coefficient with me? Coefficient. Yeah, that's just that number that's in front of our x. To remove that coefficient, we divide. And we divide by exactly what that number is. So in our case, 0 0.17 or 0.17. You just have to make sure that you're doing it on both sides. On the left-hand side, we get x. On the right, hey, on the right-hand side, is our answer going to be positive or negative? What do you think? Negative. negative. Good, yeah, division rule. Negative. Definitely negative. And if you'd like, you can do the division, unless you get really good at decimals, do the division off to the side. If you do that, you'll have 0 0.34, 0 0.17. How many places do I move the decimal? Two. So this, instead of 0.17, becomes 17. Instead of 0.34, becomes 34. 17 goes into 34, two times. Two times. and that's your answer. Which well, is kind of nice, right? We dealt with some decimals and got a whole number answer. I love when that happens. Well, this is because, because it's next to uh, the x. It's going to be multiplication, so you do opposite. Yeah. Exactly. Just like any other, I mean, if I gave you this problem, right? 4x equals 32. You'd be divided by 4, wouldn't you? Yeah. Same exact idea. It's just now you have a decimal. Now you so have this is division, it's fraction, you do opposite. We'll be multiplying. Yeah. You're just doing the inverse operation for any problem that I give you, whether it has decimals or not. Try one of these on your own, and then we'll start building these problems up little by little. 
Let's do uh, negative 2y equals 6.7. Let's come back up on the board over, over here. Uh, first thing, we're going to draw our line, making sure we we'll do the left side, we we'll do also to the right side. Divide. What's our variable? Y. We want to get everything away from y. Do we add 2 or divide by 2? Divide by 2. It's actually negative. a trick question. Divide by what? Negative, negative 2. two. You have to have that negative. So if we divide by 2, that's not good enough. Divided by 2 would not take care of the negative. We have to have the negative. And as a matter of fact, it's got to be in both places on both sides of your equation. This does give you y. On the right hand side you have 6.7 divided by negative 2. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, is our answer going to be positive or negative? Do you negative. Think? negative. So I'm going to write the negative first just to make sure I have that. I don't want to be off by a sign. That's worth like three points on the test. You don't want to mess that up. So we definitely want that negative there. And then I'm going to be dividing. So I have 6.7 divided by 2. Fortunately, we know how to do that division. We've already conquered that. We've got 6.7 divided by 2. I know I'll move my decimal place up. 2 goes into 6 three times. I subtract. I get 0. I bring down that 7. It goes in three times. I get 6. I've got to add that 0, and that goes in five times. I get the 10. So my answer is negative 3.35. So the division works, you just need to know how to combine the idea of solving equations to know how to do that with dividing equations and multiplying and adding and subtracting those decimals. How many will feel pretty good about, about these two so far? Okay, we're going to start ramping this up a little bit. Let's look at this example here. Now, of course, I do have an equation, but it's not a one-stepper like we, we did over here, like we did on, on this side of the board at first. What's our variable here? Okay. Now, there's a few things surrounding x. I see the 0.3, and I see the 1.7. We need to get one of, rid of one of those things first, and then we can handle the rest of the problem. What do we get rid of first, the 0.3 or the 1.7? 0.3. 1.7. Oh, we have a disagreement. Battle Royale. What's it going to be? 1.7. 1.7. Oh, that's a good answer. Because you're going to have to subtract the 0.3 from the 1.7. What is 1.7? Say that again. we got a constant. When we deal with our numbers, look up here at the board. Remember, if you ever get confused on what's going on with the decimal, make an equation that's similar to it without the decimals. For instance, oh, oh my hips are getting wider. Oh, no. If you forget what to do, well, just pretend that that's a 2. Pretend that's a 1 and pretend that's a 3x. Make it look similar without any decimals. Would you know how to do this problem? Yes. You're certainly not going to get rid of the 3 first, are you? No. no, you're going to get rid of the 1 first. So translate that to this idea. So if I'm going to get rid of the 1 first here, I'm going to get rid of the 1.7 first here. That translation, maybe that will help you. At least think about that in your head. So here, how would we get rid of the 1.7? Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Subtract. And of course we mean from both sides. Why wouldn't you get rid of the 0 0.38? Would you get rid of the 3 here? No. What would you get rid of here? The 1. You get rid of the 1. If you get rid of the constant here, you're doing the same exact idea up there. So think about one of these examples without any decimals first, figure out what you would do, and then translate that to the problem. How much do we get on the left-hand side of our problem here? 1.2. On the right-hand side, I have what, please? 0.3. Hey, now that's something we can deal with. 
How do you get rid of the 0 0.3? Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Good. So if I divide that, actually, we'll do it off the side. We'll take 1.2, we'll take 0.3. How many places do you move the decimal? One. That moves one. This goes in four times with no remainder. The answer is four. The answer is four. I'd like you to try this one. Do this on your own. Solve for x. Uh, as you're doing, I'll be walking around. If you need any help, you let me know. I'll help you right now. Okay, sounds like you're done. Here's some talking, so let's go ahead and do this problem. Uh, first thing, ladies and gentlemen, including the people in the back over there, what are you going to do first? Get rid of the. You're doing that one? 5.8. I hope you're already done with that one. Minus 5.8. Yeah, minus 5.8. You get 1.2x equals 2.6. 2.4? 2.4. So we're getting rid of our constant first. Yeah. Then we get rid of our coefficient. Two. Show of hands, somebody we got two. Good deal. Congratulations. It's awesome. Let's keep going. <laughs> oh my, wait, wait a second. What's Mr. Leonard doing up here? Got some crazy stuff. You guys with me? Yeah. Well, wait a second. This isn't the same thing as what we just had because now there's more than one X. Do you see the more than one X? Yeah. yeah. That creates a problem for us. We've got to know what to do with that. If you think back to a long time ago, though. Combine like terms. You can't combine like terms. There are no like terms. The, the reason why, let me be specific on this. The reason